everyone. Welcome back to another Friday and another casual champion interview. It's time for my boy, the Kogma. Oh yeah. Playing him as the Lord intended, full AP mid lane, the tier start. Let's go. This is going to be miserable because I'm playing against Malphite. And look at, look at this. Like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> you know, I, I've had a lot of experience with this character, so I'm sure nothing will ever go wrong this game. You know what else isn't terrible, though? Fan art section post-recording Nicholas Boy here, just to say, absolutely fantastic, amazing as always. Kogma is one of my favorite champions, so of course, I would have loved the fan art section for this. Amazing as always. But I wanted to make a couple notes uh, that next week is Aurora. We are not doing LeBlanc, because Aurora's actually coming out on PvE for real this time. There's already been quite a few... Uh, fan art section Aurora stuff sent my way, though a lot of it is just drawings of Aurora herself, which, you know, it's fantastic, it's wonderful, because uh, of the new champion and everything, but I would prefer to keep the fan art section of these videos to the, the people who have done the really silly drawings of drawing me as the champion, or my characters as the champion, or with the champion, or whatever, because that's how it started with the first, it, it sounds really selfish when I say it like that, but hopefully you know what I mean, uh, but also because... Uh, unfortunately, for the people who want to do artwork for Aurora, if you don't have it sent my way by Tuesday, I will probably not be able to include it in the video because on the Wednesday, I am leaving, uh, to Amsterdam to go to TwitchCon, so I won't be able to make changes if people give me artwork, like, late Wednesday night, Thursday, Friday, whatever. I'm sorry it turns out that way. I, I, if I was able to edit from a way that I probably would, but... Uh, I don't know, hopefully I'll see some of you fellows at TwitchCon, who knows? This is gonna be interesting because I get to talk about, like, Choga, the character that I do hold a lot of affection and nostalgia for, but also one that I can admit is not exactly the most, um, unflawed character in the world. And that's no better exemplified than by his biography, which is basically nothing. It's just when Malzahar was being led in by that ominous voice that we found out to be Belveth, and he got turned into the Prophet of the Void, that same call kind of lingered around in his mind, and from that call spewed forth Kogma from the Void, and just a creature of pure basic instinct and driven by hunger and the call from Malzahar's brain hole. So he's literally just on a destructive path across Runeterra trying to find Malzahar, but completely taken over by this sense of hunger, this desire to feed, but no matter how much he eats, it never satiates him. And he can eat literally everything, like plants, animals, humans, it doesn't matter. He can eat things no matter how big or how small because of the caustic enzymes he has in his body. It can break down and dissolve pretty much anything in existence. It's assumed that maybe because he dissolves everything before he even eats it or digests it, so he has no way of uh, actually getting the nutrients from the food, so he's just eternally hungry. But because of that, he's just a destructive force of nature. No! I did it, and I live out of this too. It's just another day in the life of the Maw. So you have this destructive force of nature on his way to try and find the Prophet of the Void. What happens when uh, they do eventually meet each other? Who knows? And surely nobody will ever find out because Riot does not give one single rat's ass about this little bug boy besides selling skins. Literally nothing has ever been done with him. There's no stories, there's no extra bits of lore, no appearance in a cinematic or anything. He just exists like Cho'Gath, at least, you know, Kog'Maw's bio wasn't 30% or 60% just describing what the void is. God damn, you know I hate Poppy. You know what, Poppy, I hate you. I don't even care that you're wholesome, I hate you. I hate your guts, die. The more interesting thing about Kogma is more, not about his lore, but it's about his personality because he doesn't have one. <laughs> He's relying on pure basic instinct and a need to feed. He's not really thinking, not really coherent or conscious, which is weird that he can talk. It's like Kha'Zix, I feel like him, Rek'Sai and Kogma just- uh, Cho'Gath even as well, though maybe Cho'Gath could be given more intelligence by Belveth, perhaps, but it just feels like he shouldn't be intelligent enough to talk. It, it kind of takes me out of who the character is, and also because the personality the community gave him. Because Kogma is very special in that he didn't really have a personality to call his own, so the community just kind of invented one for him, and over time, he became what's known as, uh, what we know him now today as the Void Puppy. And that whole idea of Kogma being this 
really completely innocent little goober guy who doesn't really understand what he's doing, nor does he understand that eating people hurts them. And maybe if he did know, I would hurt them even more like this goddamn poppy. Maybe he wouldn't even hurt them at all if he was conscious enough. He's just an innocent little wide-eyed child almost. The sense of innocence. And the funny part about that is not only did that community- Oh my goodness! Listen, Rockman, that was very rude of you. He's still pissed off from back in the days when he was an entire giant monolith. The curious thing about that whole deal is that even though the community created this personality, it seeped into Riot Games itself. Like, Riot Games actually acknowledged that that's what the community thought about him. Back in the day, when, you know, back when Riot Games was a lot smaller of a company, they used to do that a lot. A lot of memes became promotional material or skins, like Dunkmaster Darius, for example, only exists because it was a big meme back in the day. So the community's influence kind of pushed Kogma in this direction to help him carve out this identity as the cute monster. Not like Yumi, where like Yumi is a monster in a different kind of way. And also Yumi's just a basic cat, but like, Kogma is just this slobbering creature you wouldn't really want to have as an actual pet, but in a weird sort of disgusting way, he is kind of cute. And again, that seeped into the community, not just, ah, oh, this is the peak Kogma experience I am getting right now. Back when Rat was doing all those massive splash art update changes, and they changed Kogma quite significantly to what he looks like now, and especially to what he looked like in his in-game model at the time. Because even before he got his texture update, which I think some League players don't even know that he got a texture update now. I'll put it on screen for what he used to look like. Uh, this much bluish, more bluish creature with actual whites instead of the kind of the, the gray sleekness he has now. Though it's still false advertising from the splasher that paints him more as this kind of ashen black almost. It still doesn't really look like a uh, void monster. You know what, Poppy? You're a monster. I'm out of here. This is the... <gasps> This is the Kogma experience. And I do actually prefer the design of the splash art even more to the texture update that we currently have right now. The texture update didn't help a lot. It did help. But again, point, they tried to make him a bit smoother, sleeker, give him those kind of doughy puppy dog eyes. Again, lead into the fact that people think he's cute. I would have thought that's what they wanted to do if they did a rework for him, turning him into this cute, bubbly little creature. But then in the, the poll, they're like, nah, nah, we want to make him scary. It's, why? His whole thing, like the community basically created this character for you, this adorable little creature, and you want to strip that away? Hell no. It's funny though, the splash art false advertising thing where he still doesn't look like how he does in the splash art has just been a consistent thing for him since his whole existence back in the early days. Uh, his splash art was pink for some reason. It actually, it makes more sense for being a Void boy. He's got purple on the W now, but out of all the Void champions, he is by far the least looking Void of all. But maybe they didn't want to make him look too Void-like because they want to keep that purpleness intact, especially with the- Ah! This is why I hate Poppy play. Everyone said in the season rewind, like, Nicholas boy, why do you hate Poppy so much? Why are you being so mean to Poppy? This is why! Because they're all like this every time. Leave me alone! She's still here. She's still- You rat! What? Oh. I don't even know what just happened to me. This idea of Kogma carving out his identity as the cute monster, again, not just permeated into the community, but Riot took notice, and they would start designing his skins to cater to that. I think it started with Pugma, but then he got, like, uh, Hextech Kogma, Bima, Zapma, even Shanghai Scrolls to a degree. They're really trying to hone in, like, yeah, he's that squishy little goober guy that everyone just thinks is adorable for some reason. And I think it's just kind of novel, the fact that, you know, we as a community kind of shaped this character to what we like. He's not great by any means. He does have a unique visual appeal, I suppose. I, I don't really know what I'd do for real, because I, I love the guy. Very nostalgic connection for me. He was one of the first characters that I really gravitated towards, uh, even back when I remember playing little games of co-op versus AI before I would go to school at six in the morning, and I remember leaving a game as Kogma and leaving my teammates that <laughs> they were I don't know if they were angry at me or not. I was a call versus AI. I don't know if anyone cared, but I remember feeling very guilty about that. But the uniqueness for Kogma doesn't end there. The other big thing about him is his gameplay. And obviously, you know, Rat's been talking about reworking him for the longest time. Particularly that they want to do another big overhaul, which I don't think is really necessary. Really, I think it's just the passive needs some work. His passive is probably one of the most 
just bizarrely placed abilities in the entire game. No matter what you build on them, it doesn't make any sense for this long range squishy character to have like just a self destruct move. It doesn't make any sense. But I do find it quite interesting that out of a lot of champions that are supposed to be hyper carries, Kogma strangely has a very large hitbox, which I think actually adds a bit more balance to his character. The fact that like this hyper carry that can dish out a million billion damage per second. If you catch him out, not only is he a big target, but he pops in a second. Like, that just, that feels correct. But the thing that I quite enjoy about him the most is, of course, the fact that he's two characters in one. He is both an attack speed 80 carry or a full AP artillery mage, and both of them match up to his description as the living artillery. But if you were to ask me about what I thought was better, or even what I thought was the original design goal, and I know even back in the day he was advertised as an AD carry or whatever, but I firmly believe his kit works infinitely better as an artillery mage as opposed to an AD carry. I shall explain myself with facts and logic. One, it's it's quite a selfish play style. A lot of AD carries have this kind of notion of play around me and I'll carry the game. Kog'Maw especially so because unlike Zeri or Jinx or Vayne, Kog'Maw is completely and entirely immobile. A Kog'Maw AD carry is completely dependent on his team being able to keep him safe. And to me, that I hate that selfish playstyle. I think that is incredibly unhealthy for the game to have a character like that, that just cannot function without a team. And sometimes without like Lulu or very specific support supports or junglers, Kog'Maw can't function. However, if you build him AP, you don't need to do that. You can stay farther away. You can build items like this Banshees that I currently have. And also, big thing why I think AP makes more sense. Every single ability has not only scales off of AP, they all do pretty good damage and all combo into each other. One of the big co uh, Kog'Maw combos is like, Q, E, Alt, all at the same time. Combo them, get a big burst of damage. Uh, I'll see if I can show this actually. Just like that. And it's done. Oh, it's a rock. And even when you go full AP, the W is still useful. It still scales off of AP. It allows you to have that tiny bit of extra little DPS in between ability cooldowns. Whereas if you go 80 carry cog, oh my God, that shield. And the bug boy lives another day. If you go 80 carry Kogma, then Q does no damage. E does no damage. Alt does no damage unless they're low. Playing AD carry Kogma just turns him into just a W button. You just stand there, press W, right click, and whoopty frickin' whoopty frickin' uh, whoopty frickin' do. Oh my god, the bug boy lives another day. And that was even further emphasized back when the, um, the League Zoomers won't remember this, but back when they had that big 80 carry update in uh, Season 5, I believe it was. And they had a little mini rework to Kong one that made it so that his W would scale up to 5. As in, he could attack 5 times per second. He could break the attack speed cap. But in order to do that, to attack move, you either had to script or you just stood still. And that's what became of him. You just press W, stand still, auto attack. It was so awful. <laughs> I don't think anyone liked it. It was so unhealthy for the game, they had to revert it. And that's the other thing. Nobody likes when Kogma is meta. AD Kogma, anyways. Everyone hates it because he is so unskillful. Because he is just press the W button, right click them to death, do nothing. And again, incredibly selfish playstyle. The entire team has to play around him and defend him so that he can kill the entire enemy team. And he melts tanks because he does hybrid damage. It's incredibly unhealthy. And I don't think I know what a single person who likes whenever he's strong. Especially when they start building tank items, like that Randuin's Kog'Maw stuff, or back when uh, Frozen Gauntlet could be built on more characters, like build on Kog'Maw. It was ah, terrible, awful. Everyone, Poppy, I hate you. You're also terrible and awful. Get Bongo blasted, idiot. Oh, God, please, though. No. Get Bongo blasted, idiot. Kog'Maw lives another day. That's what I mean. AP feels a lot more correct. It feels more versatile, more build diversity, healthier for the game because it's all skill shots. If I miss all my abilities, whoop de doo I don't do any damage. And because I can play farther back like an artillery mage, like Vel'Koz or Zerath, I don't need the entire team to rally behind me to protect me. I just stay in the back and spit out some damage. It feels, you know, it's annoying at times. I still remember a Yasuo player complaining about AP Kogma despite the fact that he can block almost my entire kit. But, 
I think is not only more fun, it is healthy for the game, and it incredibly upset me when they put that, uh, the new VGU poll that they said they were going to remove AP Cogma, so I'm glad he didn't win. And of course, his skins, Bima, is the obvious best one. They surrender- oh god, uh, you know what? Yeah. Take that poopy. Alright, see- I'll see you next week for Aurora, everybody, alright? Have a swell rest of your day, everyone. I'll see you in the next one, okay? Uh, goodbye. <laughs>